yeah, we all have tendencies to be bigoted and prejudiced. We create stereotypes in our heads. We need to use our brains to look past those things. Right-wing thought doesn't typically find it very important to do this sort of thing. In fact, many parts of right-wing thought would prefer that we were able to just state these kinds of views outright all the time. They might ask, well, if this is how we think, why shouldn't we say it? Isn't it being dishonest if we don't? And so an old saying goes through my head. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And there's a reason why this saying became a thing. Now, I mean, if people are having a debate and being honest is the key, then sure, people should be able to state their prejudices all they want in that kind of setting. Unfortunately, in the social climate we're in right now, this isn't entirely possible. And also, unfortunately, right now, it seems common to just let anyone who isn't of the majority demographic state their prejudices all they want, you know, particularly against the majority demographic. And I think this needs to stop if we're going to have a civil society. If people are unfiltered everywhere they go, groups or tribes will form that are based on the things that people don't like about other groups or demographics. That's why we need to keep this sort of thing under wraps. Why we need to tamp it down as much as we can. The same goes for if we encourage media that focuses on disparaging different groups. Granted, left versus right tribes will probably always exist. The notion of creating huge groups solely for the purpose of hating other groups should be deeply troubling to anyone. Another problem is that being unfiltered, completely unfiltered everywhere we go, is incompatible with multiculturalism. We would end up destroying ourselves. All the different cultures would not be able to deal with that kind of negativity. I think striving for more acceptance of different worldviews and lifestyles is a good thing overall. I seriously don't see any significant negative sides to it, provided we're talking about things that don't hurt other people. It would be so nice if we could eventually get to a point where people are no longer afraid of being themselves, and they could freely live their lives however they choose as long as they're not hurting anybody else. Now, you could feasibly say that people can do that now, but the key thing that I said was no longer afraid. And the only way we can really achieve that is if we have an open-minded society. What really irks me is when people essentially try to argue that being open-minded and pushing for open-mindedness is an oppressive, authoritarian ideology. An ideology that's being pushed down everyone's throats. And because it's being crammed down everyone's throats and some people are authoritarian about it, they just reject it outright. Everything about it. Well, the entire notion that acceptance and open-mindedness is an oppressive ideology is really strange. I mean, I totally get that there are many people out there pushing for open-mindedness who do it in a very authoritarian way, and some people are really nasty about it. There are some people out there who want to ruin anyone's life who doesn't agree to everything that they say. You know, those people are nasty. Those people are authoritarian. That doesn't mean that being open-minded leads to being authoritarian. Or that you have to accept authoritarianism to be open-minded. You know, if someone is acting like that, they're being a little authoritarian piece of shit, no, you don't have to accept that kind of behavior. It's not acceptable behavior. In some ways, though, much of what all this fighting and worrying is about is multiculturalism versus monoculturalism. One of the arguments from a more monocultural perspective is that if we're too accepting, eventually our culture will essentially disappear. It's a strange notion, quite honestly. I mean, I can understand people saying that our culture will become less important, but is that really a problem? Does there need to be a dominant culture? Another argument is that having to keep up with other cultures is confusing and makes it harder to interact and get things done. I can sympathize with this a bit, 
as we can only really process so many things at the same time in our brains. But being aware of other cultures is something we're going to have to get more and more used to as time goes on. It's going to become a social requirement. No amount of complaining about it will change this. As long as none of the cultures are basing their identity solely on being against another culture, this shouldn't be a problem. It just seems that the majority of the people complaining about having to accept more and more things are on the right. You know, again, it seems to be a war between multiculturalism and monoculturalism. Many people on the left get angry when they're expected to accept anti-multicultural viewpoints. They don't have a problem with someone simply being Christian. They don't really have a problem with someone merely having a conservative economic viewpoint, even if they totally disagree with it. The thing that many people on the left have a problem with is the notion that everyone should be expected to conform to or even praise the dominant culture, which here in the United States basically consists of white, patriarchal Christian norms and standards. Look, multiculturalism is the future. There have been many points where I have just not wanted to accept that, but eventually I had to accept it. No, I don't adhere to or promote intersectional theory, or the progressive stack, or any sort of dogmatic beliefs that declare how we're supposed to look at other people. You know, I'm not telling you, oh, look at this group this particular way. I'm not saying that. But I do believe that we should be striving to be non-judgmental towards lifestyles and cultures that are different from our own. No, multiculturalism is not the end of our civilization. It's certainly not the end of your culture. I mean, if your culture is so fragile that it just disappears the moment we give other people a seat at the table, maybe you shouldn't brag about how great your culture is. But that's not how it works anyway. You're not going to lose your culture. And seeing more diversity of cultures and demographics in our entertainment isn't going to hurt you either. Sure, for a while there's probably going to be more token demographics inserted into our entertainment, but eventually things will even out. And no, my stating this isn't an attempt to cram a secular religion down your throat. This has nothing to do with cultural Marxism or feminism or anything that's being taught at a university. I'm not woke and I'm not trying to spread wokeness. I'm not trying to cancel anyone. I'm not trying to ruin anyone's life. I'm just saying that multiculturalism is the future and we need to learn to be more accepting if we're going to survive. Monoculturalism is going to die in a fire and I'm glad. As long as people aren't hurting anyone else, it's really none of your business. If you want to judge people for it, I mean, try to keep it to yourself unless you're in a debate or something. I've already laid out why I believe this. Anyway, thanks for watching.